All righty. G'day, everybody. It's the dog. Ah! It's now time for the sixth installment of my ACDC album series review series. If I can get the words out. We have arrived in 1978, and it's time for ACDC's fifth studio album, Power Age. Of course, ACDC had gone through the process of getting a new bass player in mid-1977, so this is officially the classic lineup that most people appreciate the most. Angus and Malcolm Young on guitars, Bon Scott on vocals, Phil Rudd on drums, and of course, Cliff Williams on bass guitar. Now, the version that we're going to discuss for this album will just be the regular nine-song version that most people in Australia and the United States would be familiar with. The album was released in the UK on the 5th of May, 1978, and a little later in the month in the US, and in, <coughs> excuse me, in June of 1978 here in Australia. This was also the last album to feature production from Harry Vander and George Young until the Who Made Who compilation in 1986, and also the final to be recorded at Albert Studios in Sydney. So, we start the album off with the single off the album, which is, of course, Rock and Roll Damnation. Basically, this was written basically to stick it towards Atlantic Records, who have been practically pressuring the band to put out a single, whereas previously ACDC preferred to just put out albums, and that's usually how they like to do things. Either way, the track was not included on the UK and European version of the album. And it was eventually added later on, but the single edit was chosen instead. Next, of course, is Down Payment of Blues. This is, of course, very familiar. This is basically about basically driving oneself to debt just to impress a girl. <clears throat> it's the longest song on the album, depending on which version of the album you own but we'll not be discussing the different mixes of the album. Up next is Give Me A Bullet, which I like to think of as a sort of sequel to Down Payment Blues. Basically, it's ACDC's breakup song. Unfortunately, the song also implies that drugs and alcohol will not help mend a broken heart, and that's exactly the truth. Not one of the best songs in the album, but it is one of my top favourites. I like to think of Power Age as a sort of angry ACDC song, Basically trying to stick it up the backside of Atlantic Records. But that's just what I think, anyway. Of course, Side 1 closes out with Riff Raff, which, of course, is the opening track on their first official live album, released later that year, which we will get to in the next instalment. Riff Raff, in my opinion, should have stayed in the set list for a bit longer. And I think that song's more about life in general, to be honest. And of course, we begin side two with Sin City, which is essentially about the lifestyle of Las Vegas, Nevada, which is also known as Sin City. Probably the only not-so-angry sounding song on the album compared to the, the rest of the album. And then there's What's Next to the Moon, which follows, of course. One of the better songs on the second half of the album even if the lyrics are a bit suggestive towards domestic violence, but instead it's more out of love, or at least the chorus insists that, you know, it's your love that I want, and it's your love that I need. It's your love gotta have. But what's next to the moon? Don't ask me, it's Bon Scott who wrote the lyrics. I mean, this album came out, what, 25 years or so before I was born. No, hang on, my mistake, 15. 15 years. Ah, oh, my head's on backwards this morning. <laughs> yeah, 15 years, because I will be 30 in October, and be sure to look out for a 30th birthday video when we hit October. Either way, Gone Shirtin' is the next song on the album. And, of course, this one's about... It's about... Well, let's just say, if we can say the word drugs on YouTube, it's about it. Can't go into too many details, but that's basically what the song's about. One of the slower songs in ACDC's back catalogue. Definitely one of the softer sounding songs as well, but it's still very serious sounding song regardless. And was played much faster during the Power Age tour. And of course we then reach Up To My Neck In You, which is the ninth song on the album, 
or eighth song, I should say, my mistake. Uh, this one seems to be also about life in general, much like Riff Raff is. Features one of the best guitar solos that Angus had ever recorded, or at least that's what I think. And, of course, the album finishes with Kicked in the Teeth, which is, as Bond puts it, about a two-faced woman with her two-faced lies who's been running around town with every mother's son. Ain't this misery ever gonna end? Who knows if it will? Either way, definitely one of my favourite albums of all time and a bit of a step up from Let There Be Rock and Dirty Deeds and everything else before that. Of course, the European version also included Cold Hearted Man, but we won't be discussing that one. Either way, this song, this entire album, definitely gains a 9.5 out of 10, or at least maybe a 10 if necessary, in my opinion. Definitely much improved over Let There Be Rock, or at least I think it is. Either way, that is it for the album review today. Thank you very much. Be sure to comment and leave a like down below. And if you're new, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay in touch with the Be A Good Dogger YouTube channel's content. But until next time, this is the Dogger saying have a wonderful week, everybody. And I shall see you again.